Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we are talking about ray tracing, specifically ray tracing on Vulcan. Now, this has been kind of a long time in the works. Ray tracing was actually first announced back at GDC 2018. It was announced by Microsoft uh, as the future of DirectX 12. They're, they did DXR, or DirectX Ray Tracing, which was an extension for DX12, and at the time, it either worked in a really, really slow software mode or on NVIDIA hardware only. Now, this was really early in the lifespan, but a year later, at the next next GDC, well, we saw the next evolution. And GDC 2019 was basically the GDC of ray tracing. There was tons of ray tracing covers there. Basically, everybody got in on the game. We had more details about Microsoft's DXR. It was actually you know, a product at that point in time. NVIDIA had since brought out all of their cards, the, NT, uh, the uh, RTX series of cards. Plus, at GDC 2019, they announced that there would be a certain amount of ray tracing support in April for older GPUs, including the 1060, 1070, 1080 series of cards. On top of that, uh, Unity and Unreal Engine both shipped with ray tracing support, specifically DX12 support, and Crytek even get in on, got in on the game with a completely um, DXR-less uh, implementation of ray tracing, which, to be honest, still hasn't been released. So uh, come on, Crytek, get on that. So anyways, up until now, it's been an NVIDIA RTX only sort of thing. Well, that it kind of changed at GDC 2020. That's when Kronos Group announced the Vulcan ray tracing initial specification or initial support. And this was kind of an early on, kind of a concept. They gave it out there, uh, did some beta drivers, got it into developers' hands, and started getting feedback on it. So this was back again, March um, of 2020, so earlier this year, which feels like, what, nine, ten years ago now, uh, this initial Vulcan um, ray tracing support was out there, a bunch of extensions to Vulcan, and then today, we're at the point of final spec. So what we can see right now is Vulcan ray tracing is a heck of a lot closer, and there's a lot to love about Vulcan ray tracing. Let's go through this first paragraph, and then we'll kind of summarize the rest of it. So today, Vulcan has released the final version of the set of Vulcan GLSL and Spur 5, or Spur V, uh, extension specific, uh, specifications that seamlessly integrate ray tracing into existing Vulcan framework. This is a significant milestone, as it is the industry's first open cross-vendor, cross-platform standard for ray traced acceleration. Uh, and can be deployed either using existing GPU compute or dedicated ray tracing cores. So you don't need to have RTX or the equivalent of RTX to make this work. Uh, Vulcan ray tracing will be familiar to anyone who has used uh, DirectX ray tracing or DXR in DirectX 12. Also introduces advanced functionality such as the ability to load balance ray tracing setup operations onto the host GPU or CPU. Sorry. Also, uh, although ray tracing will uh, be deployed on desktop systems, this is actually kind of cool. These Vulcan extensions have been designed to enable and encourage ray tracing to also be deployed on mobile. So hey, by the end of 2021, we may be having ray traced games on our phone, which is actually kind of insane. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, this was first announced back in uh, March 2020. They got a bunch of feedback from, you know, the world, game engine manufacturers, video card manufacturers, and so on, and shaped the API. Now, this is actually very similar to the March API. Uh, there were some changes. So you can see here the spec, it's basically ray tracing on Vulkan is implemented as a set of about 10 extensions. And where they really had to change, and break it down right here, Oh, did I already miss it? I missed it, I think. Yeah, so here's the changes that really came of the spec. The VK uh, KHR ray tracing extension was split into three extensions, the acceleration structure, the ray tracing pipeline, and the ray query. Now, I'm not going to go into the hands-on details of what is in the spec. First off, the majority of people using the spec are going to be low-level programmers, people who are writing their own renderers. So specifically, we, we might see you know, Unity, Unreal Engine, Crytek, Lumberyard, hopefully Godot. Godot is moving to uh, Vulkan as their back end render for Godot 4. So now potentially we could start seeing some ray tracing in Godot 4's release as well. That'd be nice to see. Um, so that is kind of the attended audience for it. Now, one thing to keep in mind, uh, there is no Apple support here and that ain't, uh, that's not the Kronos group's fault. That's, that's on Apple. And, uh, you know what? I don't care anymore. So you don't want to play with industry standards. You don't get the benefits when industry standards get better. Screw you, Apple. All right, back to the topic at hand. So here we got a lot of technical details on how it is broken down. So if you want to get into the, the bits and bytes, I will, of course, have this article linked down below. But now what we're going to look at is some of the resources out there. So alongside of this release, we've also got new drivers for both NVIDIA and AMD devices. And in the, in the NVIDIA world, these new drivers, which by the way, are beta drivers. So if 
you know you're using your machine to to game you might kill your frames per second on certain games you're playing out there or you might have stability issues or whatever keep in mind these are very much developer beta drivers these are not meant for production use and truth of the matter is unless you are specifically trying to enable ray tracing there's probably no benefits to installing these it's not going to make your games better it's not going to add ray tracing to existing games nothing like that but if you are interested in checking it out i will have this link to this page in the linked article down below what you want to do is scroll down and grab the Vulkan beta drivers. Now, in terms of what is supported, it's pretty much every video card made in the last four years or so. So you see here, um, the 2080, the 2070s, 1650, the MX series of cards, the Quadro series of cards, and then we get down even into the old Pascal architecture, the 1080, 1070, 1060, so on. Uh, so these drivers support just about everything out there. So these are the ones you need if you want to actually check out, start coding your own extensions. Now, again, I have to warn you, if you want to start writing code in Vulkan, expect some time. There's a lot of setup code involved in Vulkan development. You're probably looking at about a thousand lines of code to get a triangle up on screen. Now, the cool thing is a lot of that is set up. So getting a ray trace triangle up on screen might only be 1400 lines of code, but just do know this isn't like OpenGL where you could write, you know, 50 lines of code and having a spinning cube up on screen. It's just not the way that Vulkan works. This this is mostly going to be, again, for people writing renderers for their own engines. Uh, so just be aware that most of us are going to get advantage of this as a trickle down effect. Now, we've also got AMD updated. Now, I've got to admit, I've read this like 10 times now. And I, first off, I'm not an AMD guy. I got to warn you that right up front. So I don't know their hardware that well. Uh, but this is the driver that supports this. So this is the Radeon Software Adrenaline 2020 Edition 20.11.2 VRT beta drivers. Now, what they say here is uh, this adds support for the 6800 series of cards and Vulcan support. Now, I don't know if that is mutually exclusive. So I, I don't think so. I think all what they're saying here is that this driver adds support for this series of cards and Vulcan. So I don't think Vulcan is limited to the 6800 series of cards, but I'm not 100% certain on how to read this. And there's nothing here to say that Vulcan is. If you go down here and look at like the supported drivers, the supported cards here, uh, it's pretty much it's pretty much everything. So all of the modern HD7700 and up uh, cards seem to be supported. So I think I think Vulcan will work on just about any modern AMD hardware out there, but I'm not 100% confident in saying so. so. So again, I think this driver is adding support for a new series of cards and Vulcan, not new series of cards with Vulcan. So if I'm wrong there, please let me know in the comments down below if you are on Team AMD. But I, I think that basically this is just the driver, the common set of drivers you need if you want to check out Vulcan on an AMD card. And of course, I will link these in the linked article down below. Uh, so those are the two sets of drivers. So if you've got Nvidia, you gotta grab this one, the second one here, not the first one, the second one. And if you're on team uh, AMD, you gotta grab this particular driver, the 2020 edition 20.11.2 beta drivers. Again, these are both beta drivers. And unless you are specifically checking out Vulkan or need them for another reason, there is no reason to install either of these sets of drivers, just something to be aware of. All right, also on top of that, uh, they also updated their set of samples. So you see here four hours ago, the commit was in and you're going to see here a number of ray tracing examples. So these are a bunch of Vulcan code examples to show you how to do things like uh, ray queries, reflections and so on. So I've come in here, there, there's a number of extensions out here. You've got the code in place. And to give you an idea, here is uh, hello Vulcan at uh, just under a thousand lines of code for your setup code. It, it's it's a lot of it's copy and paste stuff, just to be aware of that. And then on top of that, we have main here uh, at 317 lines of code. So we'll add that together, you're looking at 11, 1200 lines of code. So just th that's the nature of Vulkan. But if you wanna get started with Vulkan, uh, you've got these code examples that were just updated to include the new, uh, Vulkan ray tracing extensions. So if that's where you're going from, this is probably the place you want to start from, unless you really want to start from completely scratch, which would be mildly insane, but hey, you do you. <laughs> All right, so anyways, that is it. That is the update today. We've got the final spec. Now, hopefully everything here should go fine. And in the beginning of December, uh, I believe they said, so let's just flip on back through here. Uh, their announcement was the, the follow-ups are going to be Final Vulcan can be found here. There's going to be other uh, support coming. So the Intel new Z cards coming in 2021. Uh, and then the final spec, I believe they were talking about 
about coming out in December. So this should be a production-ish thing very soon. Again, at the end of the day, the vast majority of this, though, is going to be for people writing back-end renders for game engines out there, not for end users. But if you're a very technically-minded soul and you want to get in and start playing with ray tracing on Vulkan, here you go. Otherwise, what we have to do is basically just wait a few more months, and it looks like uh, the world of ray tracing is going to be supported on a ton more hardware, which is definitely a nice thing. So let me know what you think. Uh, what you think of all of this? Are you on Team AMD and looking forward to getting ray tracing in your world? Do you think the idea of ray tracing on mobile is insane? <laughs> Let me know these things in the comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.